I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Ned, and in the video today, we're looking at some of the world's strangest hobbies. We've all got ways to spend our leisure time. Some of us watch sports, some of us play games, and some of us get a little more creative, especially in England for some reason. In the video today, we're going to be looking at 10 particularly strange hobbies. Let's get started. The Top 10 Strangest Hobbies in the World Number 10. Mooing We all know there are people superb at imitating animal calls, but believe it or not, there is such a thing as competitive mooing. Shockingly, these contests tend to take place in rural locations noted for their dairy, like Wisconsin. Yes, this does sound absolutely ridiculous, but thankfully we live in the era of the internet, so we're going to link to some videos of this below. Number 9. Faking Your Death Chuck Lamb is better known as the dead body guy. He wanted to be an actor, but unlike most aspiring actors, he was able to admit himself that he wasn't very good at speaking roles, so he went for non-speaking roles, namely the role of corpse number three. To support this, he regularly posts staged photos of his death, and hey, it's gotten him a small career as a horror icon. He even has online tributes. Number 8. Competitive Dog Grooming we all know about dog competitions, but what you may not know is that grooming a poodle to look stupid is a highly competitive subculture. Those photos you see floating around the internet of a dog that looks like a ninja turtle or a dragon or a panda or a tiger? They're all real, and they're all part of competitive dog grooming. They're mostly put on by the National Dog Groomers Association of America, but there are a bunch more across the country, much to the suffering and sadness of dogs across the country. Number 7. Milk Bottle Collecting Paul Luke likes milk. Not as in he enjoys a nice cold glass with lunch, as in he's kind of really into milk as a hobby. So much so that not only does the former milkman and current dairy sales rep have a milk bottle collection, he has over 10,000 milk bottles and actually had to build a museum to keep all of them. It's worth explaining that for decades milk bottles would have various kinds of advertisements and art designs on them, so it's not just a strange hoarding thing. However, he's just the tip of the iceberg of an entire network of milk bottle collectors who share, trade, and talk about milk bottles. But hey, at least it's a heck of a conversation piece. Number 6. Soap Carving Yep, the practice of criminals in bad prison movies is not just a character quirk, but an actual hobby. People take bars of commercial soap and carve them into beautiful sculptures, which then have to be carefully sealed or they'll kind of cease to exist. This isn't some sort of casual thing either. Soap carving requires a whole set of tools and techniques, mostly learned by carving fruit. Only once you've got your practice in fruit carving can you become a soap carver. Number 5. Tape Art this is the simple and elegant art of, well, taking a cassette tape, like those you get from the 1980s, pulling out all of the magnetic tape from the inside, and using it to create a portrait of the artist. Even as art hobbies go, this one is fairly obscure and only really got started a few years ago, but there are some pretty impressive examples of the form out there. Believe it or not, this hobby is actually becoming fairly common among the hip right now, and some impressive portraits have been done. It's just not for anybody who fears the integrity of their prized slippery when wet cassette. Number 4. Train Spotting No, it's not just the name of a movie about heroin. It's an actual hobby. Train spotting is exactly what it sounds like. People watch for trains, and when they see them, they write down the numbers of the train. Train spotters basically collect seeing certain types, tracking trains in certain regions, or seeing all the rolling stock from a certain company. Yes, that's all there is to it, and yes, it is a real hobby, and yes, more than one person does this. Number 3. Naval Fluff Collecting Graham Barker collects his own naval fluff. He has a Guinness World Record recognizing his collecting of the stuff for more than 20 years. He started in 1984, keeps it all in carefully labeled jars, and has greeted every single question about why he collects naval fluff with why not. No word on whether he's ever got a reply, like, because it's disgusting. All we can say is that it must be a great icebreaker at parties… or something. Number 2. Extreme Ironing Yes, as in removing the wrinkles from your clothes, that kind of ironing. People find weird or unusual ways to set up their ironing boards, and do so, and then iron their clothes. Granted, extreme ironers are not entirely serious about their hobby. It's as much about exploration, hiking, climbing, and other physical activities normal people do as much as it is about actually pressing a shirt. Even so, they had a world championship, which makes us wonder how long it will be before they get endorsement deals involved. Number 1. Hikaru Dorandango 
also known as polishing dirt. If it sounds weird, it is, but believe us or not, it's possible. Essentially, you make a ball of mud and draw the moisture out of it while coating it with finer and finer grains of soil. Then you work the dirt by hand, polishing it into a high-gloss sphere. You're making art with your hands quite literally. How effective is this technique? The Mythbusters used it to prove that you can, in fact, polish a turd. Not that I'd recommend that as a hobby. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and I'd love to know what you think of it, so please leave a comment below. I'm also going to link over to another video that you might enjoy, so just click on that thumbnail on the screen now. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, because we put out a new video seven days a week, and you can also visit us online. Just go to top10s.net. Thanks for watching.